You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. He told me from the beginning what he wanted, which is fine. But now all of a sudden, since we've been married, he wants to turn me into some kind of step for wife, like a robot. I'm just like. I told her, I'm gonna provide. You're gonna be the wife. I'm gonna be the husband. Mm -hmm. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Just stay home, take care of this. And you're saying you expressed this to her in the beginning and she had the nerve to become an entrepreneur. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Thompson versus Thompson. Thank you, Juan. Beata Thompson? Yes, ma'am. You are suing your husband, Quincy Thompson, for $2,250 misappropriation of marital funds. Yes, Your Honor. I understand that the two of you have been together for 15 years, married for four. Yes, Your Honor. And things have taken a turn for the worse lately, and you want to come on divorce court to talk about it. Yes, Your Honor. Why don't you give me some background, ma'am? Okay. Well, first of all, let me say, for the first 10, 11 years that we were together, everything was great, Your Honor. But for the, for the past four years that we've been married, it has taken a turn. Mm -hmm. Complete 180. When I say that I love this man, I love him with all of my heart. Mm. And I don't want to get a divorce, but lately, everything, all the arguing, all the bickering that's going on, I don't know if that's the way we're headed. What do you say, sir? Everything's completely different on my end as well. Uh, total opposite of what we agreed on, you know. Um, she knew how I was from the start, and uh, she completely just flipped the script on me. I mean, like, everything changed. How were you from the start? When we signed those papers, I told her, I'm gonna provide, you're gonna be the wife, I'm gonna be the husband. Mm -hmm. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Just stay home, take care of this. You didn't and want I got her to this work. outside the door. Okay, no. no, that's not how it was in the beginning. Can I back up, please, and tell you a little bit of backstory? Okay, first of all, when we met, Your Honor, okay, he was a DJ in a club, so we had this great lifestyle, okay? You know, I'm a little bit of an aggressor, so I, I wanted to pursue him, so I pursued him, Your Honor, because that's what I like. He was confident. He was just, you know, just up there just working the crowd. We got together, and everything was hot and heavy. We had romance every day. I'm talking about doing it four or five times, six times a week. And now we're down to doing it to Everybody once a month. That when they first talk. And we're married once a month, and I'm your wife? Are you kidding me? And so, what do you, I mean, besides time, how has the relationship evolved, though? What do you think is happening? First of all, he told me from the beginning what he wanted, which is fine. But now, all of a sudden, since we've been married, he wants to turn me into some kind of step for a wife, like a robot. I'm just like, he just wants me to on time. Hey, just, yeah, yeah, I want my dinner, six o'clock, right here. I gotta come in, you know, get the dinner ready. And if he's late, oh, I'm supposed to have dinner ready and warmed up when he comes in, even if he comes in an hour later. <laughs> I mean, I'm supposed to know this, really? Yeah. Sir, are you treating her like, like a robot on a time schedule? No, I'm, I wasn't treating her like no robot. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, yes. Like how she... Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Oh, I mean, traditionally, I thought... So you believe in more traditional gender roles, you're saying, when it comes to yes, marriage, sir. and yes, you want sir. her to stay home and take care of the home while you're yes. out making a living and yes, earning Your the Honor. work. Yes, and you're Your saying Honor. you expressed this to her in the beginning and she had the nerve to become an entrepreneur. Because isn't yes. that one of the problems? I, I didn't exactly say that, but, you know, well, for one, let's, let's since we were talking about entrepreneurship, she want to play hairstyle, celebrity play? hairstylist. Play? Oh, my God! Ma'am, I need to be able to hear the individual testimony. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Well, I said she want to play entrepreneur, like, well, going off of how you say, oh, so she, she has her hands in, like, everything, okay? Uh, once she wanted to be a uh, stunt, uh, stunt double, you know, then the next minute she want to be... Okay, she even so says I'm talented. Mrs. Thompson, stop okay. interrupting him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. First sir. she wanted to be a stunt double. Uh, then she talking about she wanted to be a, a producer, a record producer. You know, like every every other day is something different, you know, and I'm like, just stick with something, you know, show well, me... Well, she said she's a hairstylist now. Okay, but yeah, like doing your cousin hair, they don't really count though. Like, she don't got no clients. 
No ma'am. Ma'am, what like, do you have to say? Hold on. She call it. Oh, I'm sorry, Yana. She called herself celebrity status. Ain't done nobody famous her. Ain't no, nobody famous. Re- what? How you a celebrity stylist? Ma'am, ain't done, are, ain't are you no a celebrity corner. hairstylist? Okay, my cousin, they pay me money, okay? So my clients, they all pay. And you have to build steps up to what you're doing. He knew I was an entrepreneur from the beginning, and this is what I wanted. Everything that he does, I support him. But when it's time for me to go and pursue my dreams, he doesn't support me. I want to open up my own salon, but he does not support them. Okay, so she said you are not supportive in her hairstylist endeavors. Is that true? Uh, I mean, not really, because I mean, she was passionate about being a stunt uh, double too. Tell them about the building. I showed you. Tell them about the building. Tell her about the building. I showed you. Mrs. Thompson. So she called me talking about, you know, she got a surprise for one. She told me to meet her somewhere so we get something to eat, you know. And I was hungry. I'm coming and I pull up and I'm thinking I'm about to eat and it's like I see a Felice sign, so I'm like. Okay, for one, you told me you're gonna get something to eat. You know, I don't like surprises, so that's two. And for three, yeah, I'm about to go, so I just left. So you just you, you didn't even want to see the building that no, she wanted to lease. No, so really so too. you're the one. You are the primary provider for exactly. the household. What do you do for and a living? That, and that's what I was about to go into. So I mean, I'm a DJ. You know, I DJ. So that's great. You know, and you make a lot of money. And DJ. I DJ. And okay, I dance a little bit. What do you I mean, dance he, a little he, bit? He, he he wang hangs with it, Your Honor. He wang hangs with it. I don't nighttime. know what that means. I mean, he wang you know... hangs with it at nighttime. He's a private dancer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. he's a I, private dancer. That kind of, you know. He's an exotic <laughs> dancer at nighttime. I love that every time we mention dancing in this courtroom, we have a visual demonstration. Oh, yeah, from I mean, you know, so... I'm sorry. I, um, so, when did he start doing that? He used to be an exotic dancer a long time ago, so he said, I've got some bookings that want to book me. Are you okay with this? Which I was. Okay. But then there's one particular person who came on his Instagram and commented, why didn't you text me back? He can't control how people respond or what they respond or exactly. what they say on his social media. Exactly. That's right? true. That is very true. But this but particular person, when they said this, they felt comfortable saying this. So that. what happens when she makes this comment on you? Is this someone you know? No, I don't know. Personally, like, people say stuff all the time online. Like, what do they call her. them? Uh, right. Clout chasers or something Clout like chasing. That? Yeah, you know. Oh, she was, so she was clout oh. chasing on your page. I get a little get up. I get a little cowgirl get up. And the next thing I know, when I'm getting ready to get into it, the door swings open and it's his godfather coming in. Your wife is feeling violated by the lack of boundaries. Mm. There's no gray area on this one. She knew that he was living there like, we got a guest. Next thing. Okay. We, it's always a thing. It, yeah, it's always a thing. Okay, so his godfather moved in with us and was supposed to be there for two weeks in our household. It is now six months later and his godfather is still there. Hmm. And I've asked him several times, when is he going to move out? He doesn't contribute to anything. He eats up all of our food and he's always putting his two cents in our business and you never check him on that. Okay, Mr. Mr. Thompson, yeah. what is your godfather doing uh, yes, living ma'am. in the home? Because apparently your wife is not happy with him being there. Well, I mean, his family is my family. You know, I've known him all my life. You know, it's hard times right now, COVID. You okay. know, he lost his job, so I mean, like... I understand it's hard times. I think it's admirable right. for you to allow your family members somewhere to stay with you Thank during you, hard times. Yeah, I but I think the issue is, and from what I read in the papers, there's, a, there's maybe perhaps some lack of boundaries... In, in the home when it comes to the godfather? I mean, not really. I mean, of course she's gonna say So what's happened? She... What's oh, happened? Okay. Oh, okay. So you forgot God. about that story? Okay, so because yeah. we've been, you know, lack of intimacy. So one night, Your Honor, I'm like, this is after I had the baby. I go, I go to a store. This is not even my personality. I go to a store, I get a little get up, I get a little cowgirl get up, you know, I'm ready. I got the little, you know, the little, ta- what do you call it? The little tassel. I got the little, little things that hang on the side, a little cowgirl hat or whatever. So I'm coming in, whatever, and I'm getting ready to do my thing. And I get up on the bed, and the next thing I know, I'm getting ready to get into it, the door swings open, and it's his godfather coming in. So I'm hey, I'm over here covering up. And then he You're comes good. in and he says, she good. Oh, she oh, good. oh, good. y'all should have waited till I went to sleep to do this. She good. Is this that what is happened? Our house. Is that what happened? Okay. Our house. That, that is what happened. So why did he knock? He doesn't knock? Yeah. She knew that he was living there like we got a guest. That's, you know, not so the, like, that's not the issue. Right. Just because he's living there, that does not give him access to your bedroom. It so doesn't. the question it, is. It does not, but we should Especially unannounced. We should have locked the door. We know we got so he somebody. Walked, so you allow your godfather to walk into your bedroom unannounced? It wasn't intentional, but we should have locked the door. Though. Okay, so did you have a conversation with him afterwards? 
I mean, I, it wasn't super deep, like a long conversation. I was just like, you know, kind of. So you did. Next time. So you did. I was like, next time, you know, like you just need to not. That's what I just told them. That's a problem. That's a problem because. Mm. If someone's going to live with you during hard times, that's fine. But you have to assert boundaries when you have a family in your home and your wife is feeling violated by the lack of boundaries. Mm. There's no gray area on this one. Understandably, she's feeling violated. Mm. Entrepreneurship is an inherently risky undertaking. If you have been going from one thing to the next and having these multiple interests, being a jack of all trades and master of none, right. he has a right to question that as well. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms. And for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. Did you have a different relationship as a couple before the Godfather moved in? Yes, Your Honor. And what was that? It was... It was don't get me wrong. It was issues already because of... A lot the, of them. Be, okay. She asked me a question. I'm just saying. It was issues already because I wanted to open my, my salon and he wouldn't allow me to. Okay? He puts his foot down. He tells me I can't open my salon. It was already issues with the bedroom. I understand that. But this is stuff that we can work on. We possibly could have worked on together. But when you have a third party living there and constantly putting their two cents in, it's whether I need to cook and clean on time, take care of the baby, whether or not I need to open up my salon, and then it feels like that you're not defending me mm -hmm. and you're backing me against the wall like I'm in the wrong, then, then what am I to do? You have to recognize that she, she has a good point of view here with another man being in her home now as the man of the house. Right. Why are you allowing another man to interject their opinion on your marriage? There's nothing traditional about that. He ain't really... In, he ain't interjecting. Like, that she is, just this put, is what she... The things she that she is saying... She on it. She sir, put, sir. I'm just, just the, what she is saying, he has said, just those general comments, he absolutely is doing that. That is what he is doing. He has no business discussing your marriage. Mm -hmm. That's not his business. Mm -hmm. His business is to have a roof over his head during his hard times, mm -hmm. not to come in, have that roof, and then give his opinion on what's going on under that roof. Mm -hmm. So as somebody who's coming into your home who's not contributing financially... They better be quiet as a mouse. Mm. And that's all I'm yes, saying. That's all I'm saying, Your Honor, because I, I told you, I love him. I love him. She's good. But you sit up here and make me feel like I'm not, like I'm not a human being, like I don't have no feelings. I have feelings, but it's a boundary that you have to respect. And you don't even sit up here and check him. And I'm sitting up here trying to make our marriage work, and you don't even sit up here and protect me. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to have my back. Ms. Thompson, get her tissue mm -hmm. on. This, this is, you know, good. this, this is, is um, so, you know, Mr. Thompson, I think you've probably taken this, this situation with your godfather too lightly because this is a point of contention for the two of you. And I know there are many, but this is an area that's not really a gray area here. Marriage is hard enough as it is. You have to be able to protect your home space, which is, should be a place of refuge for the two of you. His lack of respect for the sanctity of your refuge is a negative force in your marriage and something that you really have to address. And I understand some of his concerns. Entrepreneurship is an inherently risky undertaking. Yes, ma'am. Right. And many people have lost a lot of money going out, trying to hang their own shingle, doing things. And I'm not saying they shouldn't. I believe everyone should be living their best life, pursuing their dreams. But if you have been going from one thing to the next and having these multiple interests, being a jack of all trades and master of none, right. he has a right to question that as well. You know, it's an investment of time and money and energy. And I think he just wants to make sure that you all are not losing money financially exactly. because you're taking on something that you're not going to stick with. Exactly. And that's I, my whole point. I don't need the amen corner from either one of you today. <laughs> I really don't. The messaging 
is not being delivered in a way where she feels she's being respected and supported. So it is not surprising that she is angry and resentful. You are suing for $2,250 misappropriation of marital funds, ma'am. What is that about? Okay. Your Honor, we have a joint account that we were both putting money into. I, on my end, was saving for my dream for the salon. And a few weeks ago, I noticed that out of approximately $5,000 that was in our account, we only had a balance of $500. Mm. And when I asked him about it, he says he went to buy DJ equipment, mm -hmm. which I feel he should have discussed with me first. Mm -hmm. so what happened, sir, with the DJ equipment? Well, uh, a couple of pieces of my equipment broke down. Um, I'm not sure if you know, like, DJ equipment, it costs a lot of money, mm -hmm. and um, I'd rather go replace it. Uh, so you could work? So I could work, you know, and get the money back. I've borrowed money before and replaced it. Like, you know, it's a joint account, like, joint. That means together, like... That means discuss it with me also. Not really. I, I mean... You know, I, I think that what you need to understand is if, if, if that is indeed true and that was a joint account, yes, he's not required to pay you back that money. But I think the bigger issue is she wants to be supported in her endeavors and you all have to find a way to compromise on that. You have very traditional roles and views about what you want your wife to do and be. The problem is your views for your wife are oppressive. She feels that you are disrespecting her ambitions and her hopes and her dreams. And she wants to be heard on that and she wants to be supported on that. I know she only has five hair clients and she may not even have one celebrity, but it's on her vision board that she's a celebrity hairstylist. Give her that. You just, you don't see your wife as an equal. And I think she's gotten to the point where she's afraid you, that this is it. You may never see her that way. But according to him, Ms. Thompson, this is how he's been since day one and none of this should be a surprise to you. You changed because in the beginning you married him knowing this is how he felt, but he never changed. At all. But you, sir, you want to be the man of the house, be the man of the house and assert some boundaries and don't let anyone else come in your house and start dictating how your house is being run by the two of you. Thank you. You know, we talk about love languages in this courtroom a lot because that's what we deal with every day. Love, we deal with love and, and hate, Juan, yep. on occasion. But I want you to understand something. People have different ways that they need to be loved and how love needs to be communicated to them. And when they're telling you that one of those ways is to support their endeavors and their hopes and their dreams, you really have to go out of your way to do it unless there has been a history and a pattern in the past of those really just being pipe dreams. But, you know, just listening to her today, I, I think she's passionate about being a hairstylist. You should support her in this endeavor, especially given the fact that your godfather is living in the house right now. In my opinion, she can't do no wrong putting up with what I'm hearing about. Mm. So you've got to start putting her first in your relationship, even with your family members and in your household. Good luck to both of you. I think the verdict was fair. Um, you know, I, I probably could do some things on my end, you know, better, better the situation. I hear what the judge is saying. I think the verdict was unfair. I feel like the money should be replaced. I love you. I do. I just want you to respect me a little bit more. I love you too. Um, and I think I can do a better job from my side of things, you know? I think you should put your godfather out, period. I'm, I'm gonna put him out. For the future, I think that we can start to communicate a little bit better. Uh, I think you should let me get the salon, okay? I'll be a dream killer. I'm gonna do the plan for the salon. Okay, well. That way it's gonna work. That way it won't be all over the place. But we are gonna get a salon, all right? We might. <laughs>